Hey guys, this is Tim from Tons Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video I'm going to create another 200 watt LED light, namely version 2. So let's get started. There will be two types of this video, the one you're watching right now and another one which doesn't include a voiceover. So it's kind of more like an ASMR style video. And we start off with creating the input cable. I opted for standard speaker wiring because it was more flexible than the hard copper wire that I used in the past. It's quite fiddly to, yeah, you know, move the copper wire around, uh, around tight bands and, and all that stuff. So I opted for speaker wires. I'm using the XT20 connectors that I've used in the past, so that doesn't change. You can still use the old power supply you've had laying around for this project and obviously also the dimmer that I've created for this project. I'm using heat shrinks across the terminals to isolate them before we slide the final connector piece, slot piece thingy onto the connector to seal it off. And we continue by preparing the fan regulator. Now please note this is a buck and boost converter. So when you're dimming the LED, you know, it regulates the fan properly. I'm going to solder two wires onto it, well, ac four actually, two inputs and two outputs. And those need to be shoved in place, as well as the regulator itself. There's a slot in the case for that, and you need to shove it in there. And then it will be flush with the case, and the LED will fit uh, on top of it, actually, without short circuiting. That's very important. Now getting the fan regulator in there is quite a challenge. You might need to soften the plastic a little bit. It's a tight fit. And when it's in there, please don't forget to solder the output wires onto it. Then we're going to route the output wires through the slots in the LED. And you'll need to connect both the wires to the required inputs. Just solder them onto the LED. As I said before, it's regulated, but there's a bug and boost converter at the output. So you don't really have to worry about that. So here you can see me actually soldering the wires to the LED. It's quite a challenge because there's a lot of thermal mass uh, in the LED itself. So you need to really pump up your soldering iron in order to uh, get them to solder properly. And when they do, make sure to tuck away the wires nice and neat. At this stage, I decided to give it a little test. As you can see, it's working. It doesn't catch on fire, which is good. But it doesn't have cooling yet, so I'm not going to run it for too long. Otherwise, we could end up damaging the LED. Speaking of cooling, let's get to the cooling part right now. Installing the heatsink is pretty simple. You just lift off the LED and drop the heatsink in place. To ensure proper thermal connection, we're going to use a thermal sheet that you can stick onto the heatsink and the LED itself. And that will bond the two together, creating a thermal yeah, path for the uh, heat to go to. And then the fan obviously at the back will blow the heat away through the exit guides. Now, as you're able to see, getting the sheets properly lined is quite a challenge. If that's done, make sure to click the LED in place and attach the bezel. That will finish off the front part. Now onto the back part, you'll need a few screws in order to mount the heatsink to the case itself. Again, everything will be in the description down below. You'll need to have eight screws and that you need to tighten with quite a force. That's to ensure that the heatsink will stay in place. And as you can see, I did something with the fan connector. I can't really remember what I did, but I did something and I fast forwarded it for you so you don't have to see it all out. Now, obviously there's the fan, it's connected. And then I remembered that I had also printed some air guides that need to be attached in order to force the air uh, through the heatsink and not let the air bounce off of the heatsink, uh, which I quickly did. And after that's installed, we can proceed by reinstalling the fan. Make sure that you push the fan in between the air guides to have a tight fit so that it doesn't fall off. If it does fall off, you can glue it to the case, I guess, or use some screws. 
I don't like that because the screws are not going in deep enough and the fan just likes to fall out on itself. But if you click it in between the air guides and you tighten the screws of the air guides, that's likely to hold the fan up properly. Then we can proceed with the final installation of the final connector. Make sure to use enough solder whilst connecting the strands, otherwise the connector could melt with such high currents. And it's finally time to test the LED. Now I'm using a power supply that I had already laying around. And as you can see the fan is actually quite aggressive. It blew away some of the isolation that's left over from the wiring. The airflow is pretty good and the light output is even better. You can see that the camera is really compensating for the extra amount of light that it doesn't expect by darkening the picture. Overall I'm glad I 3D printed another case and did this project again because the other LED was kind of broken and now I've got an even more sturdier LED that I can use for YouTube video creations. So as with the previous version links to this project will be in the description down below on Thingiverse and make sure to download them and share your feedback and who knows I'll create a version 3 of this project. So thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed the project as much as I did and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh hey hello, uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well if you want you can also view two other videos of me, so make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.